Hello, my name is Catherine Catalini Foster, and I'm a member of the board of the Ashby Historical Society. I was asked to give a talk about the historical significance and the architectural aspects of our town's library. The origin of the word library comes from the Latin 14th century word librarius, which means of books, and it denotes a place set apart to contain books, magazines, and other material for reading, viewing, listening, study, or reference as a room, set of rooms, or building where books may be read or borrowed. So how did our small community of Ashby get such a beautiful library building to call our own? Well, the historical significance dates to our town had a library collection of over 3,000 books in the late 19th century that was housed in wooden buildings and in case of fire were in danger of being destroyed. This was a major concern <clears throat> for a man by the name of Edwin Chapman, a successful businessman who spent several of his formative years in Ashby, married an Ashby woman named Mary Hubbard and spent his summers in Ashby from 1885 on in the house across the street from the library. Some of you may know this house as the Nash House. In 1901, he and his wife saw the need for a building that could house all the collection of books in one fireproof building. Mr. Chapman bought this land in the center of town hired H.M. Francis of Fitchburg, Mass. to design the building, built it for $20,000, and gave it to the town in a ceremony in 1902. What a generous gift to the town. In 2006, an expansion was added to the rear of the building, and it continues to operate as the Ashby Free Public Library. The architectural aspects. The building was designed in the neoclassical style, a style grand in scope and nature. Some of the aspects that are typical of this architectural style are form and balance. The American Museum of Natural History's Roosevelt Memorial is built with form and balance. Purity of symmetry. Popular for public buildings like the Lincoln Memorial, Gardner Gallery in Washington, DC, the Monticello with its dome in Charlottesville, Virginia, home of Thomas Jefferson, the US Supreme Court building, designed with Greek porticos, or columns, large and even in number. Elegant lines, elaborate doorways, evenly spaced windows, brick, cornerstones, which you are seeing here. They're called coins. They're built for sturdiness of the building but they also are symbolic of strength, permanence, expense, and grandness. Now, we take a look at the center keystone. It is embellished with a face flanked by an angel on either side. The face on the keystone is topped with a hat or headdress with locks of hair on either side. This is the Egyptian goddess Neith, the opener of pathways and the goddess of wisdom. On the left of the keystone is the angel of knowledge, who is holding a torch and looking at a book with a globe at his feet. On the right of the center keystone is the angel of wisdom, holding a torch and looking at a scroll with an owl 
the symbol of wisdom and learning, at her feet. Inside the library are pink marble columns from Vermont, a domed ceiling in the entryway, and a mosaic tiled floor throughout the original part of the building. As you can see here, this is Edwin Chapman and the plaque underneath his portrait that hangs in the entryway of the library that indicates that he was the donator of the parcel of land and the library. This is the dome, similar to the one in Thomas Jefferson's home. You can also see the columns from Vermont. And you can also see the mosaic tiles on the floor in the entryway. The pink and black and gray. An expansion was added to the rear of the building and it still operates as our town library 118 years later. Thank you so much for tuning in.